Okay folks, spring is rolling in, but so too is coccidiosis season. What would a farmer tell you about coccidiosis? He or she will talk about a black bloody scour, uh, lethargic animals, straining, okay? Today I'm going to dispel a few myths about coccidiosis and lay out some facts. The first thing to talk about coccidiosis is that it's a species specific disease. So birds, contrary to popular belief, will not transmit coccidiosis to lambs or calves. Even species as closely related as uh, lambs and, and, and goats, they can transmit coccidiosis to one another. The second thing about coccidiosis is that the organisms that are going to cause coccidiosis are absolutely numerous in the animal's environment. So exposure at some point is inevitable. The problem is when we get exposure in very young animals that have not yet developed their own immunity to coccidiosis. That's when we get our breakdowns, that's when we get our symptoms. Next fact about coccidiosis, it's largely a subclinical disease. What does subclinical mean? It means it affects production, but we don't see any clinical symptoms, okay? So only about one in 25 animals based on research is gonna display the clinical symptoms we associate with coccidiosis. So if you have a group of 25 animals with one displaying symptoms, chances are the rest of them are fighting off that disease. They're trying to fight the coccidia organisms inside their body, and that's gonna be hitting production, and research would suggest that that production hit is about 20%, 19%, okay? So not to be sneezed at at all. There's also evidence to say that stressor events will accelerate the onset of coccidiosis, the likes of transport, dehorning, weaning, okay? So next week we're gonna look at how we can prevent coccidiosis.